All right, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, good morning to you all. Today, we're going to kind of begin blending software programs. And you'll see this as a theme throughout the rest of the semester where we're kind of using a little bit of everything. Um, we will, of course, have some SketchUp that are solo bits uh, where we won't do too much collage work with them. But really, there's a lot of integration at this point going forward. So today is our last day with AutoCAD, but really what today's about is Illustrator. And that is the idea of taking your AutoCAD uh, drawings and then manipulating them and tweaking them and getting them to look a little bit better in Illustrator. Now, there is also the strategy of taking your AutoCAD drawings and dropping it into InDesign and doing some work in InDesign. So I'll show you a little bit of the differences of both and why you might use one over the other. But at the same time, I think it's good to kind of show you this process as we go forward. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And then I'm going to get organized here. Perfect. And I, what I did is I went ahead and I pulled up the layout from last class. And so this was the work that I had done in AutoCAD to, uh, to get my building here. As you know, we set this up as a layout tab. And when I go to export this, it's a matter of just printing it. So I click on the little printer icon and I'm using the DWG to PDF. All of these should have been preset when we set up our layout. Remember that setup is done in the page setup manager. So if I were to right click on the layout tab here, I'd go to page setup manager and then I'd modify. And this is where all of those settings are set up. So really it's just a matter of hitting the printer icon and we're going to write a um, the PDF file essentially. And so I can go ahead and say, okay. And that's gonna write my PDF file just like we did last class. Now, I already wrote it last class, so I'm not going to do it right now. We'll, we'll work on the one that I uh, started from last class. Actually, let's do it again. Why not? Let's go ahead and put it in today's folder. Oh, I'm not even in the right class. It's clearly Monday morning. There we go. All right, let's go 122. Let's create a folder for today. And there we go. And we'll go ahead and click on save. And that will then output this PDF for me. So once we have that PDF, we're going to open that PDF in Illustrator. And that's something that we did last class just to make an export uh, out of it. But this time, we're going to spend a little bit more time really tweaking it and making sure it looks good. So I'm going to go ahead and open up Adobe Illustrator. Give it a second to load up here. All right, and then I'll go ahead and click on open here. I'm going to open that PDF that I just created. I am clearly not on the right class right now. There we go. So remember, this is a PDF file, but the advantage here is that when I open the PDF file, that I can open it directly in Adobe Illustrator. Now, before I go and, and create this, uh, why did this turn out sideways? That's always fun. Well, we can fix it in Illustrator, but let me go back to AutoCAD and see if I can't sort out what happened. Let's drop back here to AutoCAD. Let me go. I'm going to right-click, and I'm going to go into my Page Setup Manager. And I'm going to confirm. Let's do an arc D36 by 24. There we go. Um, and that should solve the problem. There we go. I do need to move my viewports here a little bit. So let's, looks like they're turned off. Let's turn them back on. Let's move these over. There we go. Okay, so let's go ahead and hit that printer icon again. We'll go ahead and say, okay. I'm just gonna overwrite this file, we'll click save. 
You want to overwrite this file? Yes, I do. Perfect. And then let's jump back over to Illustrator. I'm going to close this and open it again. So I'll go to File and then Open. And this time, there we go. It's set up correctly. That was my mistake. Um, and it looks like I, I didn't fix those lines. So I need to fix the doors so that they're not phantom lines. So we'll go back and fix this. And this is really part of the process is that sometimes you don't see this until you open it in Illustrator. So let me jump back over here. And then let's go into my layers. And then let's make sure my doors are not sent as phantom lines, but instead continuous lines. All right. And that should solve that problem. And then let's go back and print it one more time. Now, one of the keys here, though, is if we're going to do collage work in Illustrator, we're kind of abandoning our AutoCAD file at that point because we're going to start working and modifying it in Illustrator. So you can't just go back and output another one. So it's important to kind of get it as close as final product as you can. So here we are, and it's close to final product. There are a few little errors that I can see, but I can fix those in um, in Illustrator. So for example, that little piece of the line weight right there, that's not quite right. If I press Control Plus, I can zoom in, I can hold down space bar to pan, and I could select that little line right there, and I could change the line thickness, the line weight to be a little bit higher. I don't know what that line weight is, but I do know what this line weight is. So that's 71.08. Uh, so let's take this one and let's change that to 1.08. Like and now that one's just as thick. So we can modify line weights after the fact. So if, for example, I wanted this bed to be thinner, right? I could select that bed. I could come in here and I could say, you know what? Let's make that down at 0.25. And now it's much thinner. So you can go in and you can make these modifications in Illustrator after the fact. And so it's important to recognize that you can always make those kinds of changes. Let's go to 1.08. Uh, sorry, that's the wrong direction. Let's go 0.25 again. And now those are thin. We could go in and we can modify some of these windows look a little bit thick so I can modify those, but you guys get the idea. So at any point you can choose to modify these. Now, if we press uh, control zero so we can zoom out and see our whole drawing here, you could start to see the line weights are showing up rather nicely. We had the option in AutoCAD of filling in the walls. So we could do the hatch of the walls in AutoCAD, but we can also do it after the fact in uh, Adobe Illustrator. And that's a part of what I'm going to show you today. One of, the, uh, one of the challenges though, is if you've added hatching to your siding, for example, that's gonna interfere with collage work. And I'll show you how that happens a little bit later on. So you may wanna export without those turned on if you intend to do some collage work after the fact. So let's go ahead and let's work on the floor plan view here for a second. Now, in order to work on the floor plan, I want to look at my layers. I'm currently in isolation mode, so let's get out of that altogether. And if I look at my layers, we can see that I have layer one, and then I have all of these other layers that are basically each of the views. And Illustrator recognizes, recognizes each of the viewports as what they call a clipping group, like that. So in order to really work with any of these, I want to release the clipping group. So I will highlight the first layer. I'll go up to these three lines up above, and I'll choose to release uh, release clipping mask right there. And it's just going to become a group. So it changes from the clip group into a regular group. I could go back here. I could say release clipping mask. And that's going to do the same thing. So I'll do this for each one of the layers. And you'll see the other thing that AutoCAD does, or that Illustrator does, or the output process does, is it takes all of what we used to have on individual layers and it converts them just into views, right? So this, for example, is our south elevation. So I could actually rename this if I wanted to, to south elevation. If that helps you keep organized. This one here, 
would be our what is that that would be our east elevation i think hold on a second let me just think sorry this is the west elevation and to change these names i'm just double clicking on them so this one would be our north elevation this would be our uh what did i just this is east elevation by process of elimination and this would be our floor plan perfect so I could even take these out of their overarching layer, right? So I could pull these out to be their own layers. Maybe not. Try putting it up here. Oh, come on. Zoom is being very slow. Well, it's okay. It doesn't matter right now. But when we go to, and what I'm going to, the technique that I'm going to use is that live paint technique that we've done before. But before I do that, I really want to just go ahead and duplicate the layer that I'm going to work on. So I'm working on this floor plan layer. Let's go ahead and duplicate that. So I'll duplicate floor plan. And then I'm going to rename this one to be floor plan fills or something like that. And I'll be working on that particular layer. So I could actually turn off all the rest of the layers for clarity here. Perfect. So now I can go ahead and I can fill that in using the live paint group. So I could select all of the objects here like that. And then I could go up to object, live paint, make. It's going to make it a live paint group. Now, in order to paint it in, I need to use the live paint tool. The shortcut for that tool is K, but uh, if I wanted to see it, right, I can come over here and let's see, where is it? It's right here, the live paint bucket, and I could drag that tool up into my toolbars for easier access. Why Illustrator doesn't just include those by default, I'm not quite sure, but there it is. And so with this live paint bucket tool, remember we did this last time, I can actually choose to fill in a particular region. So I could click on this, for example, and fill that region in. I would need, however, to make a fill color out of it. So for example, if I did that, that's gonna fill it in in black. If I don't want it to be filled in in black, I could change my color to be some percentage of gray. I could do a 75% gray, for example, and then I could fill in, say, okay each of these wall sections. So let me press control plus to zoom in a bit so we can see this happen. And I can fill in each of the walls. So this is an awful lot like the hatch tool in AutoCAD, but it's just doing it after the fact in Illustrator. So it's another option essentially for how you would go about kind of enhancing your drawings. So there's my wall fills like that. Now I could also fill in, for example, the floors. If I wanted it to, to shade the interior floors just a little bit, right? We could easily, let's take this and turn that transparent. There we go. I could easily take a light gray. Let's go maybe a 10% gray, something like that. Maybe a 12, uh, let's go 20. We'll take a look and see. I might have to change it. And I could fill in, oops, changed my walls. Let's go back up to the dark here. Go back to my live paint tool. And then let's change that one to be our 20%. There we go. Yeah, it's a little bit dark. Let's go 10%. And remember, this becomes a stylistic decision. All right, so maybe I shade that in like that. Why is this one not? There we go. And now I have 
kind of a lightish color for the floor. That may or may not be what I'm after. But again, these are options that we can do after the fact. So now that I've done that little bit of shading here, we could step back and we could look at the whole drawing. Uh, one of the things that I recommend doing at this point when we're done with the live paint tool is we can actually go ahead and we can expand the live paint that breaks it apart and will allow us to, with the white arrow, the direct select tool, to select the colored regions like that. Uh, it looks like I already made my lines transparent, which is great because I can then turn on my floor plan layer, which is on top, and I know that my lines will be on top of what it is that I drew like that. I could also go ahead and I could lock the ones with the color so that I could still work with my lines. For example, those chairs seem too thick and I could edit the line weights of those chairs to be 0.25. So they'd be a little bit thinner. So I can go through and make those modifications after the fact. Okay, so let's go back. Let's turn on all the rest of my elevation views right now. Let's press control zero and we can zoom back a little bit. So you can see that maybe my floor plan shows up a little bit better. Maybe it doesn't. Again, that's a style decision. The advantage of course, is that I can always turn off that layer and get my floor plan back. I could also separate out the wall fills from the floor fills if I wanted to and have two layers. So I'd have individual control of those. So let's look at creating the elevation views and how we might enhance those elevation views. I'm gonna work first with our south elevation. So that one there. So let's turn everything off but the south elevation. There we go. Let's press control plus a couple times. And I'm going to pan over so that we can see it. Now, all of these lines do exist. Sometimes the preview makes them where we're not, not really seeing them. When we do the export, they will show up. I'm going to go ahead with the south elevation and once again, duplicate the layer. So I'll click the three little lines here and I'll choose duplicate south elevation. And let's rename this. Oops. I call this SE dash live paint. There we go. And then we'll go ahead and turn off our south elevation, our primary lines drawing. Notice that I'm always picking the duplicate, the one on the bottom, as the one that I'm working on and turning the one on top off. That's so that when I turn the lines back on, I can uh, have them on top of whatever it is that I fill in. So let's say in this scenario, Let's once again, let's select all of my objects. There we go. And then we will take this to a live paint group. So let's go to object, live paint, make. And then I'll use the live paint tool. And I'm going to fill in, this time I'm gonna work with the windows. So I'll fill in with kind of a light blue color. We'll go ahead and say, okay. So I would fill in each one of the windows. So I've gone ahead and I filled in all of those windows. If there's a chance that I want to collage in something else, I would fill it in in a different color. But for right now on this view, we're just going to work with the windows and I'm going to show you how that process would work. So I, when I'm done with that, I can come down here and again, while I'm on the live paint tool, I should be able to choose expand, which of course is not listed there. Let's try it again here. There it is, expand. And once again, what that does is it allows me to go in and pick the individual windows. Now I could go through and hold down the shift key and select each one, or I can go up to my select menu and select same fill color. And that'll select all of the windows together. I'm going to go ahead and move those off of my current layer and put them on their own layer. So let's go ahead and create a brand new layer. And I want this to go right there. 
And this brand new layer, I'm going to rename it. And we'll call this windows. And I'm going to move all of these windows onto that layer. And I'll do that by clicking and dragging this little box that represents everything that's selected. And I'm going to drag those onto the windows layer. Now, if I were to turn off my live paint, you see that all I have are just the windows. So I could live with just the windows and I could turn my elevation view back on. We could turn the rest of my views back on, for example. I could press control zero and we could see it with its windows filled in. I could then easily select the windows and adjust the color saying, I, eh, you know what, that was a little too bright. I could drop the color down just a little bit more to where it looked what I thought would look good. That's certainly an option. The other thing that people sometimes like to do is they like to use kind of a, a cloudy sky to represent the windows as if it was kind of reflecting in the sky. So that's another option that we can have. And that's part of why I set it up this way. So we have our, our windows layer that is separate and apart from everything else. So let's turn it all off. So we're seeing just that windows layer. And that windows layer, if we look at it, contains a group which inside contains all of the individual um, window panes, right, like that. I'm gonna release that group, I'm gonna ungroup them. So let's go ahead and select them. I'm gonna right click and say ungroup. And now it's just the windows layer and all the individual windows. And if I want to use these as basically like uh, with a, to clip a photograph, for example, kind of like if you remember in InDesign, we had to combine these together. When we combine the frames together, we went up into the object when menu and we went to our compound path and we chose to make. So we're doing the same thing here. We go to compound path, we choose make, and it'll make one object, one compound path out of all of these individual little squares. So we need to do that. The next thing we need is to bring in our image that we want to use as a background. So I'll go up to, and by the way, if you get lost on this, I'm going to do it. I'm going to repeat the whole thing one more time. So don't, don't worry about it if you get there. I'm going to go up to file and choose place. And I'll come down into my OneDrive. And under resources, I've already downloaded some skies. So let's see here. We should have, let's go into collage skies. There we go. Um, let's look at cloudy skies. And it would be so nice if it gave me previews, but of course it doesn't. Let's see if it can, can give me previews. Probably because they're not downloaded. So I'm just going to pick one of these at random. We'll go ahead and place it and see what happens. There we go. So this is obviously way too big. So let me press control minus to zoom out. There we go. And then I need to make it much smaller. So let's go ahead. I'm going to use the black arrow, my regular selection tool. And we'll make it smaller. I am holding down the shift key to maintain proportions so that I don't squish it. So I'm holding down shift, make it a little bit smaller like that. Let's press control zero. And what I need to do is I need to make sure that my on my layer here, I need to make sure that that image is below my compound path. So it's right like that. So now you see it where my image of all my windows, you see the, excuse me, you see all of my windows on top of the image. We can make a few adjustments, maybe right about like that. And once we have it like this, it has to be specifically like this, where we have our main layer, we have our compound path, and then we have our image. We can go up with the main layer. We can go up to the three little lines for our fly out menu and choose make clipping mask. And it will then clip that image behind for where all of our little uh, window holes were. So at that point, I could turn back on the rest of my elevations and you can see that the windows look like they have a little bit of sky to them. Now sometimes that's a little bit too much sky, it's a little bit too strong, so you can always adjust the properties of that after the fact. So we can go in here and let me make sure that I'm selecting it. There it is right there. 
And let's go into the opacity. And I can say, you know what? I want this opacity to come down a bit. Now it's not quite so strong. Maybe something like that. And now that can provide the background for my windows. Just a different strategy and a different look. Now, maybe you wanted to actually collage in a texture on your wall. So I'm going to jump up. This one happens to be a very large blank wall. So it would be a good choice to, uh, to apply some texture to. So let's use that one as our example. I'll turn everything off but my east elevation. There it is. We'll press Control Plus to zoom in just a little bit. Hold down space bar so we can pan to move that over. Perfect. And just like I did last time, I'm going to select the east elevation layer. I'm going to click the little fly out menu. And I'm going to choose to duplicate the layer. I'm always duplicating the layer. Then the, the second one, the duplicate, I'm going to rename to be uh, east elevation live paint. Then I'll go ahead and turn off the east elevation itself. And now I can work on my live paint. So once again, I'll select it right there. Then I'll go up to my live paint. So I'll go to objects, live paint, make. And then I'll use my live paint tool. I can access that by pressing K, or I could uh, just click on the live paint tool there. And in order to do this, I'm going to have to fill it in with a color. So let's change the color. I'm going to use a gray for this because this is ultimately going to be concrete and I would fill in that part of my building. Now, let's say I wanted to also collage in this wood part up here. I could change the color. And I could fill in that. Now, here's an example. Because I use the hatch, I have to fill in each of these little regions, which is a lot more work than filling in the whole thing. So I do have that disadvantage, but at the same time, I have all of those lines, which add a little bit of interest to my drawing as a whole. So if I was doing one of the other elevations that had a lot more little regions, or if you did brick, for example, where you have all kinds of individual little bricks as a hatch, that would be much harder to fill in using this method. So you may or may not want to do it. Maybe you turn the hatch off before you export from AutoCAD. Okay, so I've gone ahead and I've done that. So let's jump over into my properties. I'm going to go back to my direct select tool, my white arrow. Oops. There we go. And we want to expand it once again. And it's not giving it to me. I love it when it does that. Let's see here. Let me try selecting it there. There we go. I use the black arrow, and then it'll let me expand it. Perfect. So now I have the ability to select the individual pieces. So I'll take the gray piece first, and I'm going to move that onto its own layer. So we'll go ahead and add a layer. So let's go to new layer. And I'm going to make that a sub layer down here. So let's put it down here at the bottom. And this is my east elevation concrete. And you know what, while I'm here, let's go ahead and create another new layer. And I'm going to call this East Elevation Dash Wood. Okay, so I have two. So the concrete is going to go onto the concrete layer. So I'll drag this little box down onto the concrete layer. Then I'll select one of these little wood pieces and then go up to the select menu and say select same fill color. There they all are and we'll drop those onto our wood layer there. That lets me then turn off the live paint and have just the colored regions left. I'll go ahead and turn off the wood now, and I'll look first with just the concrete. So as I did before, right? I wanna look at what's on this layer. So this one already is a single compound path, so we're good. Next thing I need to do is bring in my background texture, my concrete. So let's go to File, and then place, and we need to choose some background concrete. There's concrete. I don't know which one this one is, but we're just going to go with it. And I'll place it. 
and I'll drop it right there. Oh, good. It's a nice little board form um, texture here. So let me zoom out. I'm going to press Control minus. There we go. And we need to make this smaller. So I'll use my regular black arrow. And we'll make it smaller. I'm going to hold down Shift. And I think it's going to take two of these to kind of fill this out. So there's my first one. And I want two of these. So I'm going to go ahead and edit copy and then edit paste. And then because this is a tiling texture, they should seam together nicely. Looks like I might be having a little bit of trouble. I can select those two and I can use my align tools. So I'll go to window and then align. We'll make sure that they're aligned on the top. And then we can have them distribute the well, spacing. The Sorry, what? From when we need to take the, the pictures for the sky and the concrete. You can find those online. So, and I guess I should have shown you that part. Um, so if you do a Google search, um, just do images.google.com. We could search for concrete tiling texture. And there'll be a variety of textures. You can take this a step further and go into our tools and then go to usage rights and choose Creative Commons licenses. And I would also go to size and say size of large. And for example, here's the one that I was using, I think. There it is right there. So you can visit the site. There it is. And then you can download it. Sorry, I should have been more specific. Thanks for stopping me about that. And when it comes to the sky, it's the same thing, you know, background sky. Okay, thanks. So I, I don't need to, to go through Photoshop because I saw that all your images are from Photoshop. No, that was just the, by default on um, this computer, this the school's okay. computer, image files open in Photoshop. So it shows the Photoshop icons rather than a preview. Okay. Uh, I should, if... If I had downloaded, if I went here into my resources folder and I went into my collage here, if I right click on it and say, always keep on this device, it'll download all the files to this. And then instead of showing these little Photoshop icons, it'll show me the previews. But since I didn't have them downloaded locally, it wasn't showing me the previews. Um, and on your computer, it may show you the previews or it may open in a different application. It just happens to be what the school is, is uh, pushing right now. Okay, thanks. So if I did background sky, I could pick any one of these background skies. Same thing under tools. I always try to make sure that the size is large and that my usage rights are set for Creative Commons because generally that lets you, lets you use it without any problems. Okay, so I have those two. Once again, I need to change so that the compound path is on top of those two linked files. There it is. Now, with the compound path on top of those two linked files, I can take the main layer itself, the EE-concrete layer. I can go to the little flyout menu, and I can choose to make a clipping mask. And it will then clip the background with my uh, texture. So let's control plus to zoom in a couple times here. And you can see it with the board form. It's actually meeting that corner really awkwardly. So let's go ahead and I'm going to use the white arrow, the direct select. I'll take both of these and then I'm going to use the arrow keys to just nudge them down. That feels a little bit better. Okay, so I have those two put together. Now I could turn back on my lines and you can see it as a, a concrete texture on that wall. So these are all things that you can do. It doesn't mean just because I'm doing them today that you have to do them. Really, this comes down to a visual style of what do you want it to look like. Maybe you want to emphasize that a certain part of the building is concrete. Maybe you want to emphasize that a certain part of the building is wood. If I was doing the wood, let's turn off the concrete for a second. If I was working on the wood, it's a similar process. In the wood, I have a group that then has all the individual paths to it. So let's go ahead and get rid of all of that. So let's turn off my east elevation. Let's select all of these. 
I'm going to right click and say ungroup. That gets rid of the group. I have all individual paths now. I can go up into my flyout menu and say, uh, sorry, wrong thing. I can go up into object, compound path, make. That makes them all into one. And then I could bring in a background wood texture. So this one I don't actually have, so I would need to go search for it. So So maybe I'd say tiling wood texture. Visit it. And that was definitely not the image that it wanted. Yeah, that's pretty ugly. Anyway, you guys get the idea. Um, uh, let's see here. I'll just load up one that I have. So let's go to file and then let's go to place. And this is why I end up keeping these uh, long term, just so that I can easily go back and find uh, particular images. Um, That was not what I wanted. All right, one more time. Nope. I'm guessing without seeing the previews, I have to guess a little bit. No, nope, that's not it either. Well, the last one's the charm, right? Let's try that one. Yeah, there they are. Okay, so let's shrink those down. So again, I'll use the black arrow to shrink them down. And when you're doing this kind of collage work, a lot of it comes to what's the appropriate scale of these elements. So if I'm looking at this and we zoom in here, how big do I really want each of those boards to be? You know, what's the right size? Maybe something about like that is about the right size. Yeah, we'll go with that. Now, once again, I need a second one so that these come together. So I'll select it, control C, control V for my copy. Then we'll move this one over so that they line up. There we go. And that's the advantage of a tiling texture. That happens to be a particularly good one where they tile across and you can't tell that they're not one long image. So I have those two. Once again, I have to make sure my compound path is on top of my two image files. There it is. And then selecting the main layer, I can come up to my flyout menu and say, make clipping mask. And it'll clip for that particular piece. And we could then turn back on my east elevation layer. And you'd start to see that wood. We could turn on the concrete and you'd see the concrete. Let's press control zero. So we can zoom out. Oops, looks like I didn't even make it long enough. My mistake, let's try. Should have paid more attention. Let me see if I can just copy this and add it after the fact. Problem is getting it to line up again. So let's see. there we go. And I added those back in. So again, it's a style thing. Maybe I want it like that. Maybe I don't want it like that. I'm not entirely sure. And maybe these are too, um, too strong. So once again, I could select it, 
Let me hold down shift and select that one. And I could go into my properties and I could adjust the opacity down so that it wasn't so um, strong of an image. Oops. I can do the same thing for these three. Drop them down, maybe about like that. It's just a slightly different look. Let me press control zero like that. So in this, you've seen me do, let's turn back on my other layers here. Right, like that. And so you've seen me do the floor plan where I've just added color. That's the base level. You've seen me do an elevation where I put just the windows in. You've seen me do an uh, elevation where I put just the like wall textures on. You could do a combination of the windows and the wall textures. But really what you want to do is you want to make sure that your drawing is showing to the best of its ability. So what makes this jump off the page? And you know, I'm not sure in this scenario what's the right move. But I would think through what you want to highlight, what you don't want to highlight. Now, of course, all that being said, sometimes the most beautiful answer is the one where there's no textures at all. And you're living with just the, the high quality line drawings. If you have a really nice uh, elevation view, maybe it has a few shadows in it. Uh, maybe you don't want to add any collage work at all. And there's nothing wrong with that either even if we don't want to add the collage work. And I'm going to go ahead and turn these back on for right now as examples. Even if we don't want to add collage work, a lot of times we do want to add some text to a particular image. Now we have a choice here. We can do text in Illustrator and we can leave it in Illustrator and save it as a PDF, or we could do the text work in Adobe InDesign. We could also bypass the Illustrator collage step and drop our AutoCAD file directly into Adobe InDesign. So we have lots of options here. I'm going to go ahead and do a save. Actually, I'm going to do a save as. And I'm doing this just as an illustration. So this is layout two, color. We'll go ahead and click on save. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and open up Adobe Illustrator. Let's save the PDF. Or excuse me, I'm going to open up Adobe InDesign. So we'll let it save its work, and then we'll open up Adobe InDesign. So I should point out that in previous lectures, and also in the uh, assignment for today, the lab exercise, I keep everything just in Illustrator. So we do text and annotations in Illustrator, but the more I think about it and the more I reflect on my own workflow and my own process, I, I would find that the text actually belongs much more in InDesign than it does in Illustrator. So in the interest of showing you the whole process, I'm going to go ahead and work in a brand new InDesign uh, file. So let's go to File and then New, New Document. Now this is different. So far we've always worked in letter size or something rather small. We need this to match up with what we're doing. So we need a width of 36 and a height of 24, not 25. We need a height of 24. There we go. What? Come on. 24. There we go. So we have a width of 36, a height of 24. The rest of this doesn't matter. Let's take our margins away. So I'll go ahead and type in zero for all our margins and we'll create. And there's our 24 by 36 sheet. Let's bring in that file that we were working on. I'll go to file and then place. And I'll bring in that. Um, of course, it's not the most recent one here. I need to see which one it is there. We'll drop in the color and I'll go ahead and say open. And we'll place it in this upper left corner right there. And it's exactly the same size as the page. So our whole drawing should show up. Ah, so notice that it got clipped to just my building. 
When I go to place a document, if I go to file and then place, and sometimes my brain just is not working. There we go. Uh, there is the ability right here to show import options. And if I do that, you'll see that I can choose what it is that I'm bringing in. And by default, it's set to crop to bounding box. I will actually want crop to media. Then I get my full um, 24 by 36. And the reason that that's important is if I were to replace it with a new AutoCAD file or a new PDF, I want to be able to make sure that it's exactly the same. So there's my file. Let's make sure that it's lining up exactly on my page. There it is like that. Now, remember, it's jagged like this because we're not using a high quality preview. If I wanted to see it, I could right click and say display performance and then high quality display and everything would sharpen up nicely like that. We don't need to worry about it right now. We can go back to our display performance and we can go to typical display and then we can work from here. So at this point, we want to start adding in our text and our um, building notations and you know any, any kind of extra little bits that we might want to add. And for some people, we want to add in a title block. And the title block is kind of one of those weird things. Sometimes title blocks are important and it's important to include them. Other times when you're doing a presentation, you want to avoid title blocks altogether because they bound your work in and you want to be able to bleed fully off the page. So you have different options when it comes to it. I'll show you that creation as well. Let's start first with our building view labels. So I could I could come in here with the line tool and I could draw a little line. I'm going to hold down shift to make sure that it's straight. And in the interest of being clear here, I'm going to go ahead and move this onto its own layer. And I should have done that to beginning uh, because I want that layer to be up on top. So let's go to window and let's look at layers. I'm going to create a new layer. And I'm going to call this one annotation. You can say title block. You can say whatever you want. I'm going to move my line up onto that annotation layer. And we could actually lock layer one altogether. Let's go into my properties. Let's make sure uh, it's got a stroke of one point. We'll see how that looks. I'll go into my text tool and zoom in here. Oops, sorry, control plus. There we go. And then I could write on this that this is the east elevation. Now, of course, font choice becomes really important. So two things that are big mistakes that people make. One, on these kinds of drawings, they choose the wrong font. That's a big one. And two, they make the fonts way too big. Remember, this is designed to be printed at 11 by or eight uh, at 24 by 36. So we don't need 80 point labels. We need, you know, maybe at most 18 point, at, you know, smaller than that, I would say, you yeah, know, somewhere 14, somewhere in that is, is plenty. This one's at 12. So it's a little bit small. Let's bump it up. Let's try it at 14. And we're always going to step back and squint at it to make sure that it looks big enough. Maybe 18 is a little better. We'll see. Now we have the option of font, right? So we're not gonna use the default. I'm gonna go into Arial, uh, if I can type. And let's use, um, I'm just gonna use Arial regular. Right now. And there it's labeled as East Elevation. All right, we'll do a little bit of layout work. Maybe like that. Now we also really need to have a bit of a scale written. So we could do a written scale. So I could take this text, we could copy it. I could paste it. Let's change our justification so that it's to the other side. And this definitely needs to be smaller because it's the scale. So rather than our 18 point text, I would drop that down to um, you know, maybe 10 point. And this would be uh, one quarter inch equals one foot. Oops, definitely wrote that in the wrong spot. I'm supposed to write it right here. One four quarter inch equals one foot. Like that. 
And then I would put this at the other end of that little line. So that's kind of our minimum. If I went into our preview here, let me go to view screen mode preview, just so you can see it without. That's a very simple, basic label for our particular view. I could take all those pieces together and I could group them. Control G will group them. I could also right click to and select group. Right now it's ungroup, but you could right click and say group. And then once you have that, we can copy it, right? So I can press control C, I can press control V and we can drop it right here. And we could drop one more right here. Let me press control zero. And remember, I have the advantage of doing, selecting all of these together and then using my align tool with this as my key. Let's go to window and then object and layout and then align. And we'll align them all so that they all line up. So those kinds of little details always matter. So this is the east elevation. This is the north elevation. So we'll double click and change this to the north. And then this was our west. So let's come down and double click on this one. And that's our west elevation. So that's kind of basics. If you don't like these, you can use other kinds of graphic scales. I do have some that are image files that are available to download on the um, website here. Let's see here. Title box, this is a zip file. So you can download this zip file. Uh, let's see, save link as. I'm just gonna put it on the desktop for right now. I have to choose to keep it. Let's show it. And inside of this file, I have a bunch of little Illustrator files that you can bring in. Okay, so let's back up here for a second. Let me extract those onto my flash drive. So I'll right click and say extract all. And I would put these, oops, well, let's copy it over to my flash drive now. Let's put it into today's folder. Right click and I will paste it. Remember, I wanna make sure that it is in on my OneDrive because I wanna have access to these files. And let's go ahead and bring one of those in just for a change. I'll go to file and then place. And so here's a drawing scale, casual quarter inch. So we'll go ahead and open it. We'll say, okay. And you can see it there. Let's zoom in on it. So like I said, this is designed, let's go into our uh, display performance, high quality display so you can see it, to be a little bit more casual, a little bit more architectural. It, this is called a graphic bar scale. So I could use that instead of my little notation here at a quarter inch per foot. So it just depends on the look that you're going for on your drawing. So I give you that so that you could use it. Notice that there are ones at different scales. So if I went to file place, I have one at an eighth. I have a clean one at a quarter inch equals a foot. Let's look at that one. Okay. So that one looks a little bit different. Where we have two, four. Um, so it's, it's just a different style. Okay, and you can use that one if you'd rather. So those are available for you as well. Now, one of the other things that when we come to font choice, there is a font that I like to point out because I use it a lot in my personal practice. Now, you may or may not like it as part of your um, architectural drawings for school. A lot of times sticking with something like Arial is nice and clean and you just don't um, don't get lost or, or don't get... Um, 
critiqued for picking something different, but I have to point it out because I think it's great. It's a font called Frank the Architect. And if we click on it, you can see it. You can actually buy a premium version of this font, font if you want, but there is a free version as well. Um, it doesn't have any bold or italicized versions. There it is. And you can use this font. It looks more like a hand architectural font. If you were interested in installing it on the school computer temporarily, you could go in to your, you would have to download it obviously, but then you could go into your uh, OneDrive. I have them in resources and then I have a folder called fonts. And there's Frank the Architect. And you can actually install Frank the Architect by double clicking on it and then clicking install. And then it would install. You may have to save and restart uh, in design for it to show up. Let's take a look. Frank the Architect shows up, perfect. And in this case, I think I might do all caps. So let me do East Elevation. We can bump that up just a little bit. And then this would also need to be in Frank the Architect so it matched like that. So it's just a different option if you wanted to have something that looked a little bit more uh, architectural versus something that looks a little bit more uh, modern like that. Okay, so we have different options. Remember, keep the fonts small. If we press control zero and we squint at it, the font should never stand out. It should be smaller than your buildings itself. Now, when it comes to dropping in a title block, right? a title block is usually just a simple rectangle. So I could go ahead and I could click, I'm making a single click so that I could actually write in my value. So my rectangle, I'd subtract maybe a half inch. So it would be 35.5 uh, 35 inches by uh, 23.5 inches. We could say, okay, that then makes my outer border here. We need to move it over just a little bit. Let's move it back here. And it might need to go over just a little bit further. And maybe we end up wanting a little bit more border. That's a quarter of an inch border around the outside. It should also be thicker. So with our stroke weight here, I might go up to something like four. So it ends up being uh, you know, a more bold border. And then of course we could add a little bit of information in this lower corner. All right, maybe we come down into here. And let's zoom in here, control plus. Let me select both of these. I'm picking this as my key object, then I'm going back to the align windows. So I'll go to window and then align, object and layout align. Oops, I think it was already showing. Oh, it's right here, okay. Uh, let's align there and let's align to the bottom. There we go. And then I can go ahead and up the size of this. Maybe like that. And then we could go ahead and we could add in a little bit of text, so I can come in here and I can say, let's center it. So many cabin, let's change this to Frank. Let's up the size here. This would probably be the biggest text on the page. So it might be 18. Right, so maybe I do it like that. And then I add another little line underneath it. Let's up the thickness of that one. No, I just lost my mouse. There we go. 
and then you know we could add some more information you know like this is just sheet one of three or you know whatever the the, the you know site address or the you know clients or you know you know whatever you guys get the idea you can divide that up into what it is you want now putting a title block like this on a particular page is very different than having no title block on it and frequently i'll take the title block and i'll put it on its own layer just so that we can see it with or without so let's rename this layer to be title block let's move that up onto the title block layer and then you can see it if i press Control zero with or without the title block so there it is with the title block there it is without the title block I do have some image files that you could use as your title blocks if you wanted to. Uh, those are available. If I went into file and then place, you could see that I have title block casual. There's the 24 by 36. And once again, we want to crop it to our media. We'll say OK. And then you could drop that in. Let me put it on its own layer just so that we can see it. that um, this would need to go behind everything else because it's an image file so we drop it behind everything else we could right click on it and go to display performance high quality display and there it is so you can see it's just a little bit more casual but it's there should you want to use it you can use it uh, and you can obviously double click and, and modify the names and, and that sort of thing so again all of these are options for enhancing this particular file now this one currently has my colored version behind it. You can do this whole um, process here. Oops, let's unlock this, sorry. And then I need to unlock my layer one. I'm going to right click and go to high quality display. There we go, just so we could see the whole thing in its um, full state here. Now, we can do this where we have the collage file. You can also do this once you've placed your, your um, little title blocks and um, view, view labels, et cetera. Once you have those in place, you could go back and modify your AutoCAD and drop that in. The problem comes with any collage work that you've done. An illustrator on the PDF gets lost if you go back and rewrite the uh, AutoCAD drawing. So we do have the ability, however, to kind of use them separately and, and replace them. So I just want to point that out. Um, if I made a change in AutoCAD, it would be as simple as selecting this file and then replacing it. So we could go into our links. Let me go to view, uh, excuse me, window, and then links. That's my assignment 105 PDF. I can relink that to a different file right here. There it is. It's that one. So, for example, right now I could go back and I could relink it to the one without color. All right. So, I could come back to the one without color and I could relink it again. It's cropped to media. We'll say OK. And it'll replace it with the one without color. So the idea here is that we can do an iterative process and we could replace it. So let's go back to the one with color. Let's go to relink. There's the one with color. Let's say okay. And now that one has the one with color. So this can be a this part of it when we do the work in InDesign and we get the layout can certainly be part of your workflow. Uh, coming out of AutoCAD. The other thing that you can do if you use the student version of AutoCAD is here's a perfect example of where you can crop off the watermarks and then you can replace your drawing and, and output a PDF from here. Okay, so then it comes down to the final output. So two things. One, if we were going to print it, and I used to have the whole, the, it, as part of assignment 105, we had to print this drawing on the plotters and you had to learn how to print it. Uh, now that we've moved remote, that requirement has gone away, so you don't actually have to print it, which is great, but you should make a PDF of the final version. So this is ready to be a final PDF. So I'd go to file, 
and then Adobe PDF presets, high quality print. And this would then write a high quality PDF file for my work here. So let's go into my folder for today. And that is not the correct folder. There we go. And I go ahead and save this as my final PDF. Uh, so this is assignment 105. I have caps lock on. A 105-final PDF. And I click save. And then for ease of showing it on the website, all of these are fine. I would also export a, uh, a JPEG. So I go to file and then export. And instead of a PDF, I'd choose a JPEG. And we'll call this um, A105 final JPEG. We'll click save. And just like we did before, we want our quality set at maximum and our resolution at 300. It's going to be a much larger JPEG than we've been used to, and I'll go ahead and export that. Those are the things that you'll post for assignment 105 and also for turning in for assignment one or exercise 122, which is today's uh, lab exercise. Okay, so I did go slightly long. It's 9.07. Uh, let's come back at 9.20. Gives everybody time for a little bit of caffeine. I know I need it. Um, and then we'll start our check-ins for this week. <laughs>